In what age are we living today? How will future generations refer to the current period of time? Perhaps they will call it the age of oikophobia. Oikophobia, deriving from the Greek word oikos, which means home, has been defined by the late British philosopher Roger Scruton as the repudiation of one's own culture and traditions, the rejection of everything familiar. Indeed, this attitude has become dominant in the West. Elites across the European and American world now strive to bring about a world not of familiarity, but of alienation. This world of alienation is created through several separate but ideologically related developments, such as modern art, modern architecture, mass immigration, hyper-globalization. They all disrupt and erase the oikos, the home, our customs and traditions, our national identities, the beauty and harmony of our traditional arts and architecture. And all of us can see these developments if we simply step out of the door. One cannot walk through any major European city anymore without experiencing the horrors of modern buildings and modern housing blocks. The cruel implications of mass immigration on safety, on women's rights and on our general sense of community. The expropriation of our self-government, the way in which we're being stripped of our democratic rights and our sovereignty by unaccountable bureaucrats in the EU, the United Nations and the Davos and Bilderberg get-togethers. So the home is increasingly being diluted on every level and the new generation is the victim of this deconstruction. For we see the consequences of this deracination and alienation everywhere around us. We no longer belong, we're gradually becoming nowhere people. Atomization and alienation are everywhere. Psychologists generally regard the rebellion against the familiar as a normal phase of development that adolescents pass through as they grow up. But today we're in a way witnessing the death then of the grown-up because we're living in a state of continuous rebellion and anger against every aspect of the civilization which has been passed on to us. We're being governed by adolescents that have not learned to love the familiar and pass through this phase of rebellion. In the education system, children are even taught that non-European cultures are uniquely beautiful and valuable, while our own history is somehow uniquely tainted. That Europeans carry some inerasable guilt with them. That they are guilty of subjugating other peoples, guilty of all possible crimes of history, while, by contrast, non-Western peoples are being presented as completely free from any historical guilt and Europeans as their debtors. This truly is the dominant mood these days in our schools and educational system. And Europeans are doing away with everything that made them who they are, everything that made their society so great. They welcome everything that is foreign and alien to them and even cheer at their own destruction. Fortunately, we're slowly witnessing the rise of a counter-movement and a counterculture to this counterculture, a quest for ways to re-strengthen the oikos and, and revitalize our European civilization. These movements have, for example, led to the rise of so-called populist parties that seek to end continued mass immigration and take back sovereignty to the national parliaments. But one could also look at the increased popularity of farmers' markets and organic products, to the return of traditional architecture and traditional arts. These are all rays of hope in an otherwise bleak and atomized environment. Denying people a home is evil. Expropriating an entire civilization of its very identity is a crime beyond measure. Yet our elites are perpetrating it on us every day. It's time to stop this oikophobia. It's time for a society 
to find the way home again. Mass immigration, the supranational usurpation of powers and modernism in the arts must be stopped. The elites who are waging war against the Oikos, against us, must be opposed. We need a home. We have every right to defend our Oikos, our national sovereignty and identity. And we have the right to assert ourselves and defend it.